Display performance. You're terrible at this, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so I consider myself uh, a good designer. I'm an okay designer. I'm decent. I'm not that good of a designer. Okay, so I, I can work my way around Photoshop and Illustrator and uh, do layouts, but I have, I'm more of a, a content strategist, brand strategist, creative director. Um, and so when I come up with ideas, a lot of times I hand those over to Chris and Chris, you do the creative execution, but there's, there's a ton of times to where it's like, I just wish I could do it myself. And so when it comes to like creating a logo or a layout, uh, or, you know, any kind of, you know, even UX design and, and web design, I'm fine with, but when it comes to publications, I'm very reliant on Chris because to my shame, I don't know InDesign, which is why I want to learn InDesign. And so I just thought it'd be kind of cool, Chris, to invite our YouTube audience to learn with me uh, how to do publication design in InDesign. So that's what we're doing. Let's teach Sean how to use InDesign. So I, I have an idea of this thing that I want to create, it's called the lookbook. And um, it's kind of a, it's basically like our capabilities deck, but um, it's a little bit more marketing forward. And so I want to create this, not as just a, a PDF that people can download and email, uh, that we can email to people, which I do want it to be that, but I want it to be something that I can actually physically print. And so one of the marketing um, tactics that I have for the first quarter is to print out a bunch of these lookbooks and um, send them with a gift to people that I want to start a conversation with. And so that's what this marketing piece is. Um, I haven't even counted how many pages. I think it's going to be something like 20 pages or so. It's a condensed version of our capabilities deck, but it's really just to kind of highlight the diversity in projects and clients that we're working with. And so all I have so far is this wireframe that I created. And um, you can see just going through some of those uh, things. These are based off of designs that we've already done, right? Some of it we're going to have to design from scratch, but I think you can see kind of my stick figure drawings that these are designs that we have available from our case studies. I just need to know how to put them together. And so instead of just sending it off to you, I wish I could just do this in InDesign. So like I have InDesign open. This is Greek to me. Where, where do I start? What's the very first thing? First step, let's see. Let's set up our folder. In the interface uh, page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create new. Yeah. Go to print. print. Right. So it's got the right DPI and color. And, and you want to switch two inches and not ficus. Okay. And width is gonna be nine. Height is gonna be six. Okay. And then you can, How many pages? You can skip that one. Okay. But you wanna? Well, now keep in mind, and I don't know if this matters. Well, I guess for the front, it doesn't matter, but like some publications will have the front and back graphic like bleed into each other. Right. Does that matter when you're doing this initial setup? No, we can do that once we're in. Okay. So don't worry about the number of pages. Yeah. Don't worry about, so just, okay. But what you do want to do is deselect facing pages. What does that mean? Oh, well, you know, we know it's a book, so we aren't going to have facing pages. What's right. facing pages? That's when two artboards are side by side. Okay. Or if, or if it's a poster, it's just one single artboard. Um, and then you want to go ahead and rename the file. Okay. So to whatever you want to do. So name the file, set the size, <clears throat> and the size I'm not accounting for bleed or anything like that. It's just no, what it is. It's a six by nine. Um, keep facing pages because it's a publication and I'm going to need to see uh, it, uh, a book opened up. If it was a poster, I'd just deselect that. Don't worry about how many pages. Start with number one. Let's do the bleed and slug. Extend the bleed and we slug. Put point one two five. That's the standard crop size. Five for the top and the bottom. Oh, it kind of links all together. Yeah. Outside. Okay. So that's pretty much it for that part. We'll go ahead and create. So this is going to be our cover page, correct? Yeah. All right. So what's so what I had in mind for the design is kind of like a black background with a light overlaid Butler B in the background. Um, and then our full logo from just as notebook, simple. All right, let's do that. Okay. So do you know where the shape tool is at? Uh, no. 
be just like from the shop or just straight or rectangles. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. This guy yeah. right here. So short can just M. Then just drag away. What are we doing here? Oh, we're just creating the background color. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Just switch that with the stroke. Okay. And then our butler black is not pure black. It's all ones. Okay. Now, if I didn't have the logo in a file, well, I, I have my logo saved in our library. Libraries. Oh, nice. So, where are the libraries right here? Boom. So, I'm, I'm basically editing this just like I would in Photoshop. Yeah, nothing. So here is the B that has this transparent. Actually, you know what? Going off my, see, there's two ways I could do this. One is the B that is all the outline. The other is the B that's the inside, which I don't have in here. So I need to, let me try something. This is just, I'm gonna place the logo right here, like as big as I want. And see, that looks all crappy and pixelated. So you know why, right? Why is that? That the way InDesign does it is for you to, or for InDesign to run faster. For InDesign, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did so I do? So if you want it to look crisp, go to Object. But, okay, so I placed the logo from my library. This should be, this is a vector file. So now it's all nasty looking sawtooth. So go to Object. View, I'm sorry, View. And then you want to go to Screen Mode. View, Screen Mode, Normal. Actually, sorry. No. Display performance. You're terrible at this. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna display the display performance. And then go to high quality. High quality. Boom. That's more like it. Okay. Now here's the thing. I only want the inside. I don't want the square on the outside. I just want the inside. So usually, if I were doing this in Photoshop, this would be a smart object that I could double click and it opens up an Illustrator and right. I could just take the pieces that I need. I don't know if that's a workaround or like how would you do that? Because I don't want the yellow part. I just want the black part. Okay, so is that a link? I don't know. I just pulled it in from my libraries. libraries. Okay, hold option and double click it. Let's see what happens. Okay, hold option. You mean on control? Okay, okay so, so the Windows. Or Alt. Okay, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Do you have the actual vector? Well, I can pull it in in Illustrator. So let's just go create new. So this is like a. Yeah, do that and then just drag it into. Okay, design. this is the cheat way of doing it. I always have like some sort of like worksheet in Illustrator or Photoshop going on at the same time, just 1920 by 1080. And so I'll create just this kind of like work area if I needed to make any kind of illustrations. And then let's go ahead and put in from my libraries. So as you know, when you work in InDesign, you're not just using that program by itself. You're gonna use it in conjunction with Illustrator and Photoshop. It's never just in design by itself. All right, so I'm placing a copy here. Got my nice, beautiful Butler B. And this is the, I just want the inside part. So I'm gonna do I just click and drag it into my InDesign file? Yeah. Okay, hold on. InDesign's like flashing at me. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy, just delete that. Go to Illustrator, drag this into InDesign. And there it is. Okay, now this is, obviously black on black, I need to make this, this kind of like a light overlay on top of that. So how do I do so that? So we can give that a 90% tint. Right? Yeah, so I'll put it like a white overlay. <clears throat> the way I would do it typically is like white overlay and then uh, drop it to 90% opacity. So is that, how yeah. do we do that? So let's see. Cause it's not, the, this interface is a little bit different. So I have my layers panel right here. Let's see, go to Windows. Looks like you're missing a lot of tools. Okay, so I need to set up essentials. Where is that? Oh, we need Workspace. Essentials and then reset essentials. All right, okay. so you want to change that to um, white? Yes. So I'm going to view layers right here. And I'm just kind of stick, skipping ahead, but you tell me how you would do this. All right, let's see. I have my B in here. I just need to make this light. Uh, so go to swatches. You have your swatches panel open. No, where is that? Let's see, go to window. Color. And 
the swatches. And then just choose white, select white. Paper, same thing. Okay, now what I heard, and I don't know if it's correct that um, if you just lower the opacity on a print publication, like this would be fine if it were web, it would have that kind of like dotted effect. Yeah, that's true. So should I just steal this color, with this color picker tool? No, I don't think it's gonna work like that. No? No. Okay. So, so then I, I would recommend doing it my way. Okay, so what is, is your way? Go to back to the swatches. So I'm gonna put this back at 100%. I'm gonna go to my swatch. And then go to tint up top. Tint. It's not letting me. I think it's a Windows thing. <laughs> <laughs> or let's just for sake of let's just do the opacity for that. Okay, but typically tint is, and change the percentage on that. Yeah. So I need to figure out how to do this. So this is a stupid way of doing this. Let me show you how how I would how I may do this. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'd open up a Photoshop file. <clears throat> I would go here, drag this in. Uh, oh, got to put my background color. Well, you went back to Photoshop. Yeah, and so this is me, you know, this is me being a, a, well, you weren't able to help me over there. So look at, I put it in here, that's the color that I want. Select the color. And that's basically it. So now I could copy that, go over here, go to my swatches, or not even my swatches. Um, yeah, lift up my opacity back to where it was, change the fill color. No, where do you go, Stephen? Here it is. So a thing to keep in mind is that similar tools in the, in the different programs work differently. So yeah. the eyedropper tool works differently in Illustrator than in Photoshop than in Insta. Okay. How does it work differently here? Like, what is it pulling? Like, It grabs not just the color, but its styles. Um, and you can do that with text as well text styles. Okay, so I think I got this the color that I want. Okay, this is centered, it's got my guides right here. If I go back to my wireframe, it looks like the B is cut off, like the bottom of the B is completely cut off and it's covering like two thirds or actually like <clears throat> three fourths of the page. And so I'm gonna actually increase this by like zooming out, Let's see if this works. Okay, so. Scaling is the same, holding shift and then expanding it. Yes. Um, okay. So that looks about how my sketch was. Now, how do I preview this? Like what it's gonna look like as a- Hit W. Hit W. Hit W. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna move it a little bit. Okay. It's just like a subtle background element, you know, it's not, too blatant. So now we want to add the Butler logo? Yeah, now I want to actually add the Butler logo, which I could go back to my libraries. Now you asked me earlier if it was a link. What did you mean by that? So how InDesign works, you know how in Photoshop you place images and the file just keeps growing? Yes. What's the biggest Photoshop file you've ever worked with? You don't want to know. <laughs> I've actually designed a billboard in Photoshop. Did you make it the actual the size? to scale because you didn't want to have it pixelated when they when you sent to print. Mm -hmm. And so it was a gigantic file size. And so we did it at like 100 DPI, not 300 like typical print would, but it was 100 DPI and it was like 15 feet. I'm guessing 15 gigs. <laughs> yeah, it was not huge. even possible. I had to, I don't remember how big it was, but it's huge. Yeah, so with InDesign, instead of placing files Inside, it works with links. Okay, gotcha. So it's... it's so it doesn't uh, reside within the file. It's somewhere else in the folder. Got it. So your design file is always going to be under a mag. So when I put these things in for my libraries, is this a link or is yeah, this... Yeah, it's a link. Okay. So that looks cool. Do you have the reverse version? Well, no, I don't. So let's just pretend I did it, but this is vector. How would I change that? 
So I'm not sure why it's not letting you uh, edit it. Yeah, I think that's a PNG. It's not though, because I can pull the same thing into, uh, I do have the reverse file actually, but I'm not, I wanna see how this works. See, look, I pulled the same file. So I'm just gonna go here and this is vector. No, it's not. You're right. It's a PNG. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now I have to actually go get the file. Okay. So that's our, our four dark backgrounds. See, it's still not letting me. Does that mean that's a PNG? Yeah. If I do it. Now look at if I have a, a if I select V, which is what is this the uh, the selection tool, selection tool? I can move it around. If I select A. It's like moving it around inside that box. What's so that's, going on there? that file resides under a, or inside a, it's called a frame. Okay, so, so this thing creates a frame. To. So if I wanted to do something funky to where like, you know, in Photoshop, I'd be able to do a clipping mask. And I'm not saying I want to do this, but let's just say I did want to have, um, I don't know what that is. I wanted to have this B be like the container for a picture inside of it. You could do that. Frame. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? So. Can you copy an image? Oh, sure. Let's, Let's go to good old uh, Aaron Pixabay. Oh, Let's see. Aaron Space. Here, let's do this uh, Aurora Borealis. Looks kind of cool, right? So I'm just going to copy this. Yeah. All right. Instead of downloading, so should I just paste it in here? Or no? Uh, double click on that. So with the selection tool? Yes. Double click. Okay. Paste it in. That B has multiple graphics, so it's grouped. So I think you still don't have a vector. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with your Windows machine. You know it's vector because when you zoom in, okay, it yeah, doesn't that do a, vector. a sawtooth thing, right? And so that color that I had, sorry, for sure, you're watching me do this. <laughs> Grab just this B. I'm going to throw this into InDesign. I'm going to get it the size that I want it. The placement that I want it. So Control Object. Alt V. There it is. So Control Alt V. It worked, right? It did. It's hard to tell. It is, yeah. So, okay. So that's what it was. It was Control shortcut. Alt V. So if I just copied and pasted so what? It's so, just going to be on the top. Yeah, all right. So now I can zoom out, I'm holding Alt and then kind of scrolling back. I'm gonna constrain the size by holding Shift and boom, that looks sexy right there. Now I'm not gonna use that, but at least I know how to do that now. Okay. Okay. So it was a vector. Yeah, that wasn't a pointless waste of time. I'm not gonna use that. Oh wait, and so I just deleted it. How do I delete just the image now? Keep clicking until it turns into a red right there. Okay. Boom. All right. Now this is what I, I need to put this on top of that B. So I'm going to hold command right bracket. For me, is that just be control right bracket. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then how did I even have this on the wireframe? This take way longer than I expected. So look, at, I, I'm in this wireframe. I completely like misunderstood the shape of this thing and had a lot more room in this little kind of cutout mm -hmm. nook for this Butler branding lookbook thing to sit. So I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. I might reduce the size of this. I don't know. What do you think of that? I mean, I think it looks fine how you had it before. How oh, I had it before? Just thing, having the you button. You don't need to have an empty space. You could just superimpose it on top of the thing. Okay. It's pretty cool. I feel like it needs to like line up with something. You know? Let me play around too. All right. Butler branding. I like that. So we think so far so it's pretty we're, confusing. we're basically on the cover. So for <laughs> like this would be so much easier in Photoshop for me. I, I can do 